Welcome back to the KB Data Science Channel. Today is November 7, 2020. It is time for me to run my weekly projection for COVID-19 deaths in the U.S. And specifically, my projection is for what, four different dates, December 1st, January 1st, and February 1st. Three days. <laughs> okay? So that's, of course, January and February is obviously the, the key number there is actually February by February 1st, 2021. Uh, the other two are just um, sort of a little personal challenge to see if I can uh, get some intermediate numbers correct. Okay. So what we're going to do, we're going to load some data. We'll load some data. Pull out the, the, pull out the data for deaths. Then we're going to plot the cumulative totals. Now, before that, I just want to show you something else up here. It's very interesting. This is the website for the University of Washington Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation. This, these folks are actually cited back in the, back in the summer, once by NPR.com and the second time by USA Today slash Yahoo News as being one of the top modelers, pandemic modelers in the country. Let's see what these folks have to say here. This is what I want you to understand. Daily deaths is the best indicator of the progression of a, of a pandemic. One more time. Daily deaths is the best indicator of the of the of the progression of a, of, the, of a pandemic. Notice they say so. Therefore, you know, beds don't matter, masks don't matter, and cases don't matter as at least as much. But still, daily deaths is the, is the best indicator. And, and this is their this is their current model. For, were deaths within the U.S. by February 1st. This this plot here should look familiar. Okay, this plot there should look familiar. All right. Of course, this almost mirrors exactly my model. You know, a, a peak back in mid-April followed by a steady decline of close to 80 percent by the time we get down over here, between 70 and 80 percent by the time we get over to here. And this, and this is their model here. This is their projection. Basically, they're saying if nothing changes, we'll have a massive spike in deaths, including, you know, beginning with daily deaths, okay? Well, you know, the, and they talk about, you know, universal health mass coverage. You know what? You know, you can call me a cynic, but I, I'm, my model is actually counting on the fact that nothing changes in human nature. If you're wearing a mask, I'll go, I'm, I'm sure you're going to continue to wear a mask. If you're not wearing a mask, I don't see any reason why you would change. After all, you, you haven't got sick so far, right? So I wear a mask. So that's that's my model. My, my model is, you know, to put it another way, my model is assuming that, 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 that the percentage of people wearing masks isn't going to change between now and February 1st. Okay? So their number up here is 399,163 by February 1st. 2021. And again, uh, the thing I want you to remember about cumulative totals is they can basically, the cumulative total can never go down. If your cumulative totals goes down, then you got a problem with your data. That's as simple as that. It can, given enough uh, declining days, flatten out. You remember the, remember the expression flattening the curve? No? Well, flattening the curve? Well, Obviously, right now, there's not a lot of flattening going on in the U.S., but that's okay. Now, we'll come down here. We're going to calculate the current daily average deaths, COVID-19 deaths for the U.S. That's 933,000 deaths per day on average. And these are the numbers for the for the University of Washington site we just looked at. You can see that, that they've, changed their, they've changed their number one, two, three, four, five different times. First, it goes from 389, 394 to 389, 385. Then the last last week and this week, 399,000 by February 1st, 2021. Okay. Now this is now this is uh this is my model. This is my predictive models right here. Uh, I can tell you right now for November 1st, I was I was within plus 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 or minus five percent of this 229 number. 229,672 deaths there. I was within 5% of that number. And uh, now for the, by December 1st, I'm predicting 261,895 deaths with a plus or minus 5% range of 248,800 to 274,989. 
by January 1st, 2021, uh, I'm predicting 291,151 with a range of 276,593 to 305,708. Okay. February 1st, I'm predicting 317,482 with a range of 301,607 and 333,356 deaths by February 1st, which is significantly lower than 399. But we'll have to wait and see what happens. Let's take a look at daily cases. No surprise, cases are continuing to climb. To climb. So now, so now let's calculate the the, uh, the average number of cases we have to have in order to reach that 399,000 number at February 1st, 2021. We have to average 1,853 deaths per day between now and February 1st. At the current rate, we're only going to have 318,220 deaths, as I said above. Okay? So we, we're currently at 933,000. Deaths per day on average. We have to have 1,853 deaths between now and February 1st in order to reach that 399,000 number. Okay, so now let's just plot that information, get a visualization of how it works. Okay, the bottom line here, the red line, that, that is the average number of deaths, current deaths per day, which is 933 or 34. The green line is that 1,802 deaths today. We got an average between now. In February 1st, to reach 399,163 deaths. Now take a look at this. Take a look at the gap between the red and the green line. Take a look at all the day, all the all the dates so far, all the days so far, when the day, when the average number of deaths per day was below this green line. Look at all the days when it was below the red line. You know that, that's a, that's a pretty good jump to go from 933 to 1800. Okay. And that's what, that's why I'm, that's why my model is based on daily averages and not some more complicated model. Okay, so this is good news, folks. This tells us that the sacrifices you and me are making is having a difference. Wearing masks, social distancing, avoiding crowds impossible, is 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 reducing the number of deaths per day. It's also pushing up the average. It's also pushing up the number required to get to three hundred ninety nine thousand. Okay. Let's take a look at a slightly different plot. This is a uh, this is a uh, this is sort of a stylized or fitted curve, as we say. Okay, but the pat but the pattern's the same. A single a speed bump again. But look at look at all these all this fitted curve that's below this line right there. And look at all the ones where it's below this line here. My friends. That's fantastic news. Do not be misled by talk about cases and by talk about, you know, lagging indicators like hospital beds. They don't mean a thing. Or they, or they don't really, no, I'm going to say they don't really mean a thing. Because in the end, as the website said, daily deaths is the single best indicator of the spread of a pandemic. Okay? Don't be misled. Anyway, thanks so much for your time, Dan. We'll catch you a little later on.